Hi, I'm Salma Benoen. In this video, I have a small introduction to pseudocode algorithms. We're going to introduce selection and for loops. So all algorithms are made up of assignment. They follow a sequence. There is selection, two types of selection statements, if statements and case statements. And in this video, we're going to look at examples of how to write an algorithm using a loop for totaling many numbers, finding the average of numbers that are input, and also finding the maximum. First, we'll take a quick look at assignment. The assignment operator in IGCSE Cambridge is the arrow sign. So here we are assigning the value 5 to the variable x. And following in sequence the instructions, we're assigning the value 6 to the to the variable y. In the next line, the sum is equal to x plus y, and we have print sum to display the output of that arithmetic operation. Next, we'll look at selection. So the first type of selection is an if statement. So there was one past paper question before that asked, when do we use if statements and when do we use case? We use if statements if we have two possible options or if we have relational operators, so we're using greater than or less than. Let's take a look at this example. Write a pseudocode to input the age and print a message to say yes, you can drive or you are too young. Here's how the algorithm works. Input age, use a selection. If age is greater than or equal to 18, then print allow to drive. Else, print too young. And if. Now this algorithm had two options, either this or this, and it had a relational operator, so in this case we would use if. Let's look at another example where we, where would we use a case statement. When we have more than two options to select from, and these options are discrete, so they're like one standalone option, not like greater than or less than, not a relational operator, we use a case statement. For example, create a case statement to select one for English, two for Arabic, three for Urdu, otherwise none of the above. Sometimes we hear that on the telephone when we make a call. Here's how we would write that in programming. First, we need to input the name of the variable, so we're gonna input selection. Now the person has typed either one, two, three, or something else. So here's the case selection of, if they chose one, print English. If they chose two, print Arabic. If they chose three, print Urdu. Otherwise, print that language is not available. Now here's a program which uses only assignment and sequence to input five numbers and find the total. When we're looking for the total, the first thing we need to do is we initialize a variable, for example, called total and assign zero to it. This tells the computer, get ready. I'm about to keep adding some data to this variable have it ready for me so I can keep it as my running total. After that we have input num total equals total plus num, input num total equals total plus num. We repeat those two statements five times and finally at the end we print the total. Now this is kind of the childish way to tell the computer how to find the total. A more efficient way is to write that algorithm using a for loop. So again, whenever we write an algorithm, we look for what are, what's the output. The output is total. We initialize that to zero. So total equals zero. For count, count will be assigned from one to five. What statements do we want to repeat five times? These are the two statements. Input num, total equals total plus num. And we use the keywords next count to continue the loop for the five times. Once this loop has continued five times, we print the total is total. The great thing is about this algorithm is that it's only six lines, and if I wanted to find the total of a hundred or a thousand numbers, the algorithm would also remain six lines. For the next example, we're going to input 50 numbers and find the total of the positive numbers only. So I'll start by initializing an identifier with a name that's meaningful, total pause, and I have zero assigned to total pause. For count, count runs from one to 50. First, I'm gonna input the number. Then I'm gonna add some selection. If num is greater than zero, then total pause is equal to total pause plus num. And if, next count. 
these lines are going to repeat 50 times. So I'm going to input 50 numbers. I'm going to check if that number that I input is greater than zero. If it is, I'll add it to my running total. Once I've input 50 numbers, checked if they're positive, and if they were positive, added them to the total, I'm ready to print the total of the positives is total pause. Another algorithm that we see often in IGCSE Cambridge Computer Sciences, input 100 numbers and find the average. Now, how do you find the average in your head if I asked you to find the average of 100 numbers? Well, I would take all the numbers and add them together, total them together, and divide by the number of numbers that I have. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to instruct the computer to do the same thing. We start by initializing total to zero. For count, count runs from 1 to 100. We input each number and keep adding it to our total. Total equals total plus num. Next count. This will repeat 100 times. Finally, once we have the total of the 100 numbers, we're ready to calculate. Average equals total divided by count. Print. The average is average. Another algorithm that typically comes is looking for the largest. So let's say we have this example, input five positive numbers and find the largest. Here's our algorithm. First, we need to initialize largest to a number that's smaller than any of our inputs are going to be. So if the question says input five positive numbers, you could initialize largest to zero, or if you want to be on the safe side, just initialize it to a negative number. Now for count, count runs from one to five, input the first number, okay? If that number is larger than largest, then assign that number to largest. And if, next count, that will allow the loop to repeat five times and print the largest is largest. Let's have a look at the trace table. So I have some sample data, some normal data, 4, 12, 7, 30, and 8. Now at the very beginning, largest is equal to negative 1,000, count equals 1. I input the first number, it's 4. I check 4 is larger than negative 1,000. So now I'm going to replace largest by 4. Next count, count equals 2. I'm going to input 12. 12 is larger than what's saved in largest. It's larger than 4. So I'm going to replace largest by 12. Next count, count equals 3. Input the third number, 7. 7, is it larger than what's saved in largest? Is it larger than 12? It's not. So next count, count equals 4. Input the fourth input, which is 30. Is 30 larger than what's saved in largest? It is. It's larger than 12, so now largest has become 30. Next count, count equals 5. Input the fifth number, which is 8. Check, is 8 larger than largest? It's not. We're finished with our loop, so now we're re ready to print what's stored in largest. Print, the largest is 30. Sometimes you might get a question that says, make three changes to find the smallest. So in our previous example of finding the largest, we had a variable called largest, and we initialized it to a very small number. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to make the variable called smallest and initialize it to a large number. Now we have our for loop. For count runs from 1 to 5. Input the number. If the number is smaller than what's stored in smallest, then assign that number to smallest. And if next count, this will allow the loop to repeat five times. After we've repeated five times, we've input the numbers, we've checked if they're smaller than smallest, we're going to print the smallest is smallest. Let's look at how this loop runs. So here's our trace table. These are the variables that we have, smallest, count, num, and output. First, smallest is 1,000. We input, you know, count is equal to one. Input the first number, four. Is four smaller than 1,000? It is. So we're going to replace smallest by four. Count equals two, input 12. Is it smaller than four? It's not. Count equals three, input seven. Is it smaller than smallest? It's not. Count equals four, input 30. Is it smaller than smallest? It's not. Count equals five, input eight. Is it smaller than smallest? It's not. So finally, we're gonna output print, the smallest is smallest. So here were some examples of IGCSC questions. Typically, they might ask you to write the pseudocode or they might ask you to find errors. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. Let me know if you'd like to see a while loop video. Bye-bye.